Streams. We often forget their purpose and how valuable they are to us. Many plants and animals find their homes or habitat in the streams themselves. We see these habitats in the water, on the bottom of the stream, in the stream bank, and of course, in the area next to the stream. That area along the stream is often called the riparian area. Streams provide people with drinking water, transportation, and places to fish and swim. The stream on your property probably gives you a scenic place to get away from the bustle of daily life. Most of the time, streams balance the rise and fall of their water levels and both the removal and buildup of silt, sand, pebbles, rocks, and debris. A stream's balance can easily be upset, however. The forces at work to upset this balance may be from natural events, like floods, or from human activity. Upstream development may result in more hazardous flooding and erosion of soil from stream banks and downstream deposition. Flooding is also worsened by the removal of stream bank and riparian plants. While a stream may eventually arrive at a new balance, some events may cause permanent damage to both the stream and riparian area. This damage includes the loss of property and productive land like pastures, crops, trees and forests as soil erodes and is carried downstream. To find out what this looks like, we spoke with Eddie Martin, engineer with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. The people that own this land have lost a good bit of their banks, where the channel would be maybe 40 feet wide, now it's 60 or 70 feet wide. They've lost 30 feet of their bank. They've lost their trees. They, they're scared to let people come fish because the bank is raw, and as they walk down the banks, they erode the banks. What's wrong with losing the bank? Well, this dirt has moved downstream to become sediment for some, to be somebody else's problem. And that's part of the concerns over animal traffic or foot traffic is if we erode these banks, not only does the farmer lose his fence or the landowner lose his land, but we see this dirt moves down to become a problem in other places. Some have tried to fix the problems created by their unstable streams, but often the fixes treat symptoms rather than the root causes. This approach often has unsuccessful or short-term results. If you have a stream problem, the good news is that there are ways to address the causes. These approaches provide us with a more beneficial, longer-lasting solution. The stream restoration approach establishes a new, natural balance based upon the needs of the stream, riparian area, and the landowner. The Natural Resources Conservation Service, or NRCS, is ready to help you stabilize your stream and maximize its natural functions. Using its established standards, the NRCS can take a site-specific approach to determine the best combination of measures that will improve stream bank protection, wildlife habitat, and riparian areas. If you are eligible, the NRCS can also provide funding to help you cover some of the costs incurred in restoring your stream to full health. One measure the NRCS uses involves various natural rock structures to control erosion, keeping the fastest current away from the unstable stream bank. In this section will be treated with uh, veins or, or barbs or cross veins or whatever we need to restore the function of this stream. I'm standing on the top of the most visible rock. There's actually more rock buried into the bank. This J-hook will move down toward the river and moves upstream. These rocks are what we call native stones because we want them to blend into the river. We don't want them to look like riprap. They have a flat top, they have a flat bottom. They continue to slope down toward the water. And once we get out to about a third of the way across bank full, the structure quits running straight upstream and it makes a hook downstream. If you could look at it from an aerial photo, it looks like a large J and that's why we call them J hooks. Along with the J hook, the NRCS uses other structures depending on your stream's needs, using boulders and occasionally large tree trunks. These natural structures protect the stream bank and create beneficial animal habitats. The restoration combines immediate stream bank preservation with more permanent natural solutions. The bank stability is created by either erosion control blankets or netting with a seed mix under there to sprout and root and start the process. Or you see what looks like piles of logging debris. That logging debris pile is actually placed wood. There are anchors in the stream under it. There are steel cables that wrap over it and there are anchors at the top. This is called a, a whole tree revetment. 
these trees will in time provide food and energy to the stream. They'll provide a filter for silt and other materials moving downstream. They'll provide a place for seeds to lodge and sprout and grow a new bank stabilizing vegetation. What we like to see on a stream bank is, is a, are trees, usually hardwood trees and shrubs. They provide that root mass in the soil to hold the soil in place. I like to tell people that the root systems of woody plants are like the reinforcement steel in concrete. You've got to have them to make sure it has the tension to hold in place during a storm. The benefit to you is you're not going to lose any more of your land to erosion. This is a stable bank that will revegetate. The benefit to your neighbor is he won't get the silt from your property. And the benefit to the community is the fish and the stream will live healthier. Stream bank and riparian plants provide food, cover, and shelter for the animals that frequent the stream. Part of the stream bank restoration process is to encourage the regrowth of plants along the stream side and the riparian area. It's interesting that you have to have the trees to give the full stream restoration benefit. It holds the soil in place during times of flood. The leaves feed the stream. The trees are here also as wood, woody parts fall off, they too feed the stream. The goal of the NRCS is to create lasting land protection, reduce downstream effects, improve your stream's habitat for wildlife, and restore its original natural beauty. The landowner gets a benefit because his crop will not continue to wash away. This bank will be stabilized, this soil will be here to, for his, his lifetime, stable, protecting his crop. And it's just, it's just a nice place if he wants to come and enjoy the woods and enjoy the stream, he has that benefit also. I like to go back and see the stream after we've restored them. It's a real good feeling of we've accomplished something, we've helped the wildlife, we've helped the people. But it's interesting, the people usually say they like the sounds of the stream. It's restored the sound they remember as a child. You know, we may be saying we're here working on streams, we're here helping trout, we're here helping the banks, we're here helping the people downstream. But it all boils down to we're helping people help the land. Get in touch with an NRCS representative today to see if you may be eligible for any of their programs. All NRCS programs are voluntary, but stream bank restoration is subject to federal and state regulations. The NRCS can help guide you through this regulatory process. You can find more information about stream bank restoration from your nearest NRCS office or through their website. Additional information on stream bank and shoreline protection is available through NRCS Conservation Standard number 580. It's available at any NRCS office and on the web. The NRCS is an equal opportunity employer and provider. The Natural Resources Conservation Service, helping people help the land.